Since I regularly work with clients who want to get great results with their QuickBooks files, as we begin working together, I find that it's extremely useful to follow a principle that Stephen Covey promotes. It's called Begin with the End in Mind. As you create and build your QuickBooks structure, one of your primary goals should be to design a system that lets me produce a wide variety of useful, understandable reports. The kinds of reports that you can use on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis to understand and run your company more effectively and more profitably. Your reports are the final product, the deliverable. They're where the rubber hits the road, the icing goes on the cake, and you get your bang for the buck. So, just as you work with your clients to help them think through what they want their project to look like at the end and help them think through a variety of decisions along the way, I'm asking you exactly what kinds of reports do you want to see as your end product? If I were to ask most people that question, they'd respond with, what do you got? So I can go home and think about it. Well, since I don't have a better Loans and Margins magazine to send home with you to ooh and ah over, and none of the cable channels have latched onto setting up a reports and accounting channel, and my latest reality TV series concept, the Financial Survivor series, is still being mulled over by some eccentric top minds at a yet-to-be-created television network, we're going to use this section of the seminar to explore some of the different kinds of reports you can get with QuickBooks if you have a well thought through design. So let's take some time to begin with the end in mind. There are two major types of reports in QuickBooks, summary reports and detail reports, and we're going to view each type, as well as how you can quickly see the original individual transactions included in these reports. Now, in order to see a sample of a summary type of report, let's go to the QuickBooks Report Center and select a standard profit and loss report. After you've done this, you'll be asked to choose the date range to be displayed in this report. For this example, please click on This Fiscal Year to proceed. Then select OK to approve the date range displayed. And open Sesame. A profit and loss report pops up and displays the results of transactions entered to various income statement accounts for this fiscal year. This is a summary report. You'll see that it shows a total for each account. The account totals show the accumulated results of all of the transactions assigned to that account over the time period that you chose when you ran the report. For instance, your total income for this time period and Immediately beneath the cost of goods sold title, your compensation cost totals for this time frame. Click on the Next button to move further down in the report to see more results when you're ready. At the top of this screen, there are more costs of goods sold. In this case, you see materials and building supplies with an account balance of 115,536.41. You'll also notice that QuickBooks runs a variety of subtotals and totals within summary reports. For instance, further down in the report we see a grouping of costs titled Non-Job Specific Direct Cost. Notice that the subtotal for this group of costs is 2,481.10. And then you'll see a total for cost of goods sold, shortened here to total COGS, this includes all of the costs shown under the cost of goods sold title. And below that, you'll see another computed amount called gross profit. This is computed by subtracting cost of goods sold from income. Click the scroll bar to continue through to the end of the report, where you'll see the net profit for our sample company. In this screen, we've scrolled back up into the cost of goods sold section of the report to illustrate one of the ways that you can create a detailed report. In this instance, let's look at the detail for the Materials and Building Supplies account. All you'll need to do in QuickBooks is to double click on the amount shown to see the underlying. The report that pops up is a detail report. It shows the individual transactions that make up the amount shown in the account total. 
So in this detailed transaction report for the materials account, you see each individual transaction listed, the type of transaction, the date it occurred, the transaction reference number, the job name and or vendor name, memo notes, the amount, the balance, and so forth. Then, let's say you see a particular transaction that you want to see in more detail. At any time that you want to, you can just double-click on any transaction to see the actual entry. Go ahead and double-click on the Wolverine and More entry to see what happens. The original entry is displayed, which, in this case, is a bill. You can just review the entry and leave the transaction, or, if you wish, you can make a correction and resave it. Any changes you make will immediately show up in the detailed and summary reports. So now that you've been exposed to the basics of summary reports, detailed reports, and what we accountants like to call drilling down into the underlying transactions, we're going to move on to review some of the specific reports that you'll want to be able to prepare from your QuickBooks accounting system.